but the new one I'm seeing is priced under market value. Really, 120 days on market price. How long has it been priced under the market value, guys? Consumers are so savvy in housing now, so people know that it's not priced below market value. Or you don't know what market value is, because if it was priced below market value, it would be gone, but it's not. Welcome back guys, down here on the waterfront in Gulf Cove today. I'm gonna try to beat this rain, a lot to cover. Wanna start off right away with the fact that statewide cash sales for Florida single family homes have crumbled 14% year over year. I put a video out, uh, I think it was last week, detailing you know, that overall sales were down, so we're gonna expect cash sales to go along with it. But to see cash purchases drop 14% statewide, from June of 23 to 24 is a big deal. And some of the other areas I'm gonna tell you about, it's considerably more substantial. And again, it's gonna depend on where you are. Your areas may be different, but statewide, that is what we're looking at. To put that into perspective, in April of 2020, 2022, our all-time high cash sales as a percentage of closed sales was 33%. It's down to 27% now. So we're seeing the investment activity really die down and pull out. You, I've done other videos on this and you guys pretty much know why. The carrying costs and the insurance and the rent softening, it make it kind of hard to really be buying rental properties and cash flowing them right now. Especially if you're buying, forget about it if you have a mortgage. It's, I don't think it's gonna work at all. And since the rest of the world has opened up, Airbnb has lost its shimmer. So you really can't produce the results you once could with that product either. Not to mention, it's kind of getting a little bit of a stink on it, but we had at one point from just Port Charlotte and Punta Gorda, we had over 1500 Airbnbs. And obviously that sense declined, which is also fueling why so much inventory is hitting the market. A lot of these investment properties, not only are investors not coming in and investing, but they're offloading a lot of the stuff that they have because it's just no longer giving them the returns that they once were getting during the pandemic. And quite frankly, I think you can get 5% in a decent high yield savings account right now. So I know the play is the appreciation on the real estate. You guys will see we have some nice waterfront homes down here. But you know, if you're looking at it from a strictly cap rate, what am I getting on my return? Some people are just parking money instead of taking the risk. And you may say, Ben, well, if the investment aspect down here is so hard right now, why are they building all these luxury apartment complexes. I don't know. <laughs> I would love to ask them. Now these were started years ago, you guys know it. This could have been kicked off in 21, 22, this investment started and they have to finish it out. They are still building more, but one of our recently built ones, Charlotte Commons, I found interesting. I pulled it up on Zillow yesterday and they had, this was built in 2022. They had 80 available units, guys, in one complex. That's wild. That is absolutely crazy. And people wonder why I'm like, the rental market's a mess down here. Absolute mess right now. These are the reasons. And it's a little strange because most of these apartments that are vacant are one bedrooms. Studios and one bedrooms. The studios filled up. Everybody went in for the lowest cost to do what they could. And the one bedrooms got left. So now they're trying to do promos on the one bedrooms. And it's like, I don't know how many single working people you think live here. And retirees generally don't want to come here to rent. So. I don't know who these one bedrooms were for, to be honest with you. And just to extrapolate that, when I did my first video on the rents in the area last June, focusing on just how bad the inventory was exploding for the rental market in Charlotte County, we had about 695 apartments, homes, duplexes, everything. Well, now we have over 1,700 on Zillow. So my, my, what a difference a year makes. And we have all the landlords wondering, why can't I get my units rented? One, they're not priced properly for the incomes here. Great place to retire, guys. Southwest Florida, killer place to retire. Not a great place to come here and work. <laughs> it's kind of tough unless you own your own business. A lot of service jobs that just don't support these types of rents. Now I mentioned a 14% drop in cash sales for the state for single family homes was kind of timid compared to other places. Let's go through a couple here. So for Charlotte County, we saw a 19% drop in cash sales year over year. Orlando, 22% drop. That tells me that the cash investment in Orlando is evapor evaporating. Almost one fourth 
of the cash purchases that you had last year are gone. Uh, and Orlando's still a strong market, but we'll see what happens when the cash keeps getting pulled out like that. Continuing down, Miami actually down 13.5% year over year for cash sales. So you're, you're kind of seeing across the board, it's reflecting that state number I told you. Now here are some of the big ones. If we take a look at Cape Coral, Cape Coral down 19% year over year. And again, not to be outdone, as you guys know from some of my other videos, Collier County, your Naples, Marco Island, Immokalee area loves to come out and really outdo everybody because their cash sales are down a whopping 28% year over year, almost a 30% decline. And cash consumes a lot more of their market purchases than it does say up here or other areas of Southwest Florida. So they tell me we're breaking records for heat today, but I'm not, I don't care, I'm not taking this hat off. You're gonna hear me, uh, 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 cause it is hot. It is hot middle of summer down here, guys, but you know, you get a little bit acclimated to it if you don't stay in the AC for too long. You get out every day, kind of become accustomed to it, give you another waterfront spin here. Pretty cool area. Lots of, uh, lots of new construction going on here, which I'll touch on as well. So as far as cash sales go, 27% statewide sounds kind of high. That's our baseline, really. That's sort of what it's been over the past 10 years. So I would say we are back to pre-pandemic levels of cash sales in the state of Florida. Again, your area may fluctuate as you saw that all these did that I named. So, you know, if it's not happening near you, let me know in the comments, let me know what you're seeing. Now, new construction, as you guys know, we have a glut or had a glut of new construction in this, especially in Gulf Cove, but mostly Port Charlotte, Northport, Cape Coral. I am seeing, surprisingly, in the middle of the summer, that if a 3.2 with a two-car garage comes on, anywhere under 350, new construction, that bad boy's gone. Gone, flooded zone or not, they don't care if you got city water, septic, it's gone. So that seems to be the price point right now, the price floor for the summer, at least, on the new construction homes, somewhere around 350. Uh, I had a customer that was coming in to purchase new construction, we had been watching some new construction homes slightly above 350 because we're going to try to get a deal. You know, we're looking a little higher because we're going to try to hit them a little lower. And they, two, three days before they came down, they dropped these houses. And man, if they didn't go immediately. So I was like, oh my God, that seems to be the floor right now around these parts. And that was even in an area like Northport that has 10 times the amount of inventory they had during the peak mania in 2021. I don't know if I'll put that video out before or after, but I do have something on Northport showing we've actually gone 10X for single family homes in the city of Northport, but they're not new construction. So those are still, like I said, new construction's pretty much the best deal right now, guys. This looks like a newer house here as well. And everybody's realizing that the insurance rates are better. So that's starting to see a price floor depending on size and uh, not really location. Like people kind of looking when they're like, hey, I want to be in Southwest Florida and they call me at least. They're like, yeah, Punta Gorda, Port Charlotte, Northport, Inglewood, Venice, if I can. It's a large area they cover. So new construction is doing well there. Um, we are still building. I don't know what the new construction inventory is going to look like here coming into the fall. Resale inventory is going to be strong. <laughs> There's just really no way around it, um, especially with some of the things that I'm seeing people do. You know, they're delisting their homes, as we've mentioned before, or they're putting them up to see if they can rent them with intentions of bringing them back on the market in the fall. And I think that's just, I don't think it's gonna be the strategy they think it is. I think it's gonna flood the market with even more inventory at that point. That's kind of funny because I'll actually have agents reach out to houses I showed months ago and say, hey, we're, we're pulling this off the market until the fall. It didn't sell now for the price we want. So we'll see what happens during the election. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know, kind of risky um, in my opinion, but they'll text me that and they'll say, however, if you have any other buyers in the meantime, feel free to bring them by. The house was overpriced in the spring. The house is overpriced in the fall, if, whether it's on the market or not, guys. Uh, so just kind of gimmicky stuff like that. Another thing I'm seeing, we've talked about the, you know, re motivated seller, uh, reduced price, seller needs to move, seller offering concessions, all these things that they put in listing agreements or uh, listing descriptions, excuse me. And I don't know, eh, I think it puts a bad stink on it. But the new one I'm seeing is priced under market value. Really? Really? 120 days on market price. How long has it been priced under the market value, guys? That's so crazy. I mean, consumers are so savvy in housing now. Like, I really got to give you guys credit, everybody on the channel too. I hope this helps you. But like, man, 
you guys are on top of markets. You people know comps that I know. You know, they're looking at what's selling, what's going pending daily in the areas they're interested in. So people know that it's not priced below market value. Or you don't know what market value is because if it was priced below market value, it would be gone, but it's not. Now, something I do have to mention for new construction because I did unfortunately just run into this with a subscriber who's looking to purchase in the area. If you go to a builder and you don't have an agent, you'll probably register with them. You'll probably sign up, give an email, things like that. If the agent isn't listed at that point in time, and nobody knows this, you know, so he, he had asked me, the subscriber, to bring it up on the channel. If the agent isn't listed as your agent at that time, and you may not have even picked one, you may just be looking around, putzing around, he's, they're not gonna be able to participate, most likely, in that transaction. And I understand completely. If you go to a builder and you start asking questions, they tour you around, they show you houses, you start working out numbers, you leave, and then you come back with a real estate agent who wants to get a commission, <laughs> I get it, you know what I mean? I understand why it's done that way. But just so you guys know, in the area, generally I do have to register you. I have to be the point of contact. I have to go there or I really can't get involved in uh, any of the transactions. I wanna to touch on land really quickly because I don't do it often here. And I did just have a customer I was taking around looking at new construction and they were interested in purchasing adjacent lots. Generally, that's pretty hard if they're not listed. Um, you. We can do some work to track them down and see if it's an option, but it is generally hard to do it if they're not actively for sale, especially when some of these were bought 20 years ago. But I figured, well, before I start telling them what kind of price to offer, let me look in a one mile radius of this house and how many land listings are there? Keep in mind, guys, not double lots, not corner lots. These are 10,000 square foot standard lots down here in the Gulf Cove area. 157 lots in one mile. It's like, oh my God. And uh, they're selling too, guys, honestly. So I pulled the past five years, 10-year uh, trailing stats for land here in Charlotte County because got me thinking, okay, how, how crazy is this? And it's, it, the, the listings are actually way down. 21, 22, our land listings went through the roof. Now down here, they're about where they were historically the past 10 years. We have about the amount of inventory for land. It is still moving if properly priced. Always an attractive uh, product, So, but we do have, you know, it, it may be, it may seem like a lot of land for you, but for Charlotte County, it's kind of normal. And real quick, guys, we'll pop you through another new construction since we're talking about it so much. We'll give you the quick one, one and a half minute tour. You guys know how we do this. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, this is a prestige model with a pool in Beachwalk. It's two beds, two and a half baths with a den, just over 2,000 square feet. We'll take you through. Nice high ceilings. Your first bedroom is going to be on the right here. Has its own Bathroom suite, very nice walk-in closet. You can use this as an in-law suite. All your guests can stay here. Take you through to the half bath. This is the laundry area. And I like this door because you can just toss your laundry through from the master bedroom. Let's get you back out into the den study. Technically has a closet, but wouldn't classify it as a bedroom. Nice spacious living area. Eating space at the island in the kitchen. You got a decent sized pantry over there. We'll spin you around for your little breakfast. Uh, we'll call this a dinette area. All right, we'll give you one more shot of the living room. We'll take you through the primary bedroom, starting off with your closet. You do have a bigger closet than this, guys, through the bathroom here. Double vanities, stand-up shower, little seating area. This has the pass-through into the laundry area, so just toss your dirty clothes in there and then walk around and go clean them up. One more swing through the primary. We'll take you out to the pool. It's got a nice little seating area. You can stay covered here on the right. All right, and we'll end it here with the pool view of the water. Since we're chatting about new construction, the question I get asked a lot is how many of these are being abandoned? We are seeing an uptick in half completed models on the MLS, but not to the extent that I would say, oh, is alarming. You guys will see them when I walk by sometimes. They are popping up around town. You know, things that builders just can't get finished. Maybe they ran out of money. Maybe they were financing the deals. Tends to be the smaller guys, not the bigger guys, but nothing in the way that would cause me to have concern at this point. Definitely an increase from where they were two years prior, um, but it's good to see that at least they are trying to salvage them and sell off the work that was done rather than just leaving it there for the grass to grow over on most of the MLS listings. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me today. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.